Well, it's finally looking pretty smooth and shiny. So now what I'm going to do is take the tape off and clean up the fretboard and take the plug out of the body and uh, get ready to put the bridge on. Cleaning up the tape residue with naphtha. This tape leaves the fretboard and the frets quite sticky. So, get rid of all that before I move on. The tape covered up a lot of where the bridge will sit. Um, now I have to find exactly where the bridge is going to be located and then remove a little bit more lacquer right around the, the edges there. I want as much wood to wood contact as I can get. Now the first thing I'm going to do is mark on the tie block where the first and the sixth string show up because that'll help me align the bridge from side to side. There, there are two factors here. There's, there's the side to side alignment so that the strings are evenly spaced on either side of the fretboard and then there's the front to back alignment so that the intonation is correct based on the scale length. So what I'll do first is try to approximate the side to side alignment. So if I put my straight edge right on that pencil mark where the treble E string is and then the other end of the straight edge right at the very edge of the fretboard. So then I'll measure the clearance at the 19th fret and I've got five millimeters of ebony showing. So now if I move the straight edge to the other side and do the same thing. Oh, wow. I've got five millimeters of ebony showing. So that's the side to side alignment that I want. If it had been different, like there had been eight millimeters showing here and two millimeters showing there, then I would have slid the bridge over but since I hit it right the first time, I am not going to move the bridge around. So now, equally important, maybe more important, is the alignment or the, the positioning of the bridge relative to all the frets. So this is a 650 millimeter scale, which means that the distance from, from the nut way down there to the 12th fret is half of that, or 325 millimeters. So theoretically then, the, uh, the bridge, the, the string slot, the middle of the string slot, should be at 650 millimeters. However, if I did that, the as one played the guitar and they moved up the fretboard, the strings would get noticeably sharper in pitch. That's because as you move up the fretboard, you're distorting the string more each time you fret it. So in order to make up for that, we do something called compensation. And... Uh, what that really means is 
moving the bridge a little bit farther back than the theoretical distance where it should be located. So on a classical guitar, that distance is about two and a half millimeters from where the math says it should be to where you actually want the center of the saddle slot. So in this case, instead of 650 millimeters, I want it to be at 652 and a half. Kind of hard to see a half millimeter. So what I'm going to do is line up the front edge of the saddle slot with 652 millimeters, keeping the, the 12th fret at 325. And that'll give me the compensation that I need. So I'll move the straight edge over to where the treble string is. And that's too far back, so I want to slide that forward. And now I'll do the same thing at the base side. And that's too far forward. So I'm going to slide it back a little bit. Okay, now I'll check it again. This will come forward just a little. That one went just a little too far back. Okay. Okay, so now that I've got that bridge exactly where I want it, I'm going to take this scribe and very carefully scribe a line in the lacquer around the perimeter of the bridge. Lacquer is so thin, I can feel every grain line as I scribe the line. Now I have to remove the rest of the lacquer inside of the scribe line. I'm going to use tape right along the scribe line, all the way around, and then scrape away all of the lacquer inside the area that I frame off with the tape. Okay, so just make sure the bridge fits inside of that tape does with very little or no play from side to side or front to back. So that's my spot. Now I take a sharp chisel and just start scraping. Okay, that's pretty well ready to go. You can see just some real small traces of lacquer right close to the tape. I just I don't want to try to get so close to the tape that I wind up sticking the chisel into the tape and leaving what would be a vis visible defect in the finish. So now I'm ready to glue this on. First step for gluing on the bridge is to put this clamping call inside of the guitar right under where the bridge will get clamped and that'll give me a, a firm base to uh, to clamp against so the slots match the fan braces and I need to tape this in place so 
once I get it in there, I'll stick a few pieces of tape on it. Okay, now I can put some glue on this and glue it in place. I'm just going to hold this for a, a couple seconds before I put the clamp on. Um, gives the glue a chance to start penetrating the pores of the wood and a little bit to a, to a small extent it reduces the amount that the bridge skates around once I put the clamp on surface tension of the glue always makes the bridge want to move and I, I have to push it back between the pieces of tape right where it is supposed to be. You can see there's a pretty good amount of squeeze out. I used more glue than I should have on this one. So it comes gushing out from under the bridge. Um, that's one advantage of having the tape all the way around the bridge. It catches all the squeeze out. So in about 10 minutes that excess glue will crust over. Then I can gently scrape it away with a stick and then I'll remove the, the masking tape. Now I'll take the tape off.